All right, this is guided practice for subtract fractions with unlike denominators. It is found on page 391 and 392 in your workbook. I'm wondering though, before we get to that, does anyone know the difference between a poorly dressed man on a tricycle and a well-dressed man on a bicycle? Let me say that again. Do you know the difference between a poorly dressed man on a tricycle and a well-dressed man on a bicycle? Well, a tire, of course. Mm, mm, mm. Did you get it? I, I think that was actually a good one. If you got it. All right, moving along from that. Do you understand reasoning? Oh, you know what? Once again, I need to tell you to get notebook paper. Uh, they, they give us some space on this, but we're going to do a lot of work. It's not going to be hard work, but it's going to be a lot of it. Um, so go ahead and get some paper and then we will move along. So in the example on page 390, is it possible to use a common denominator greater than 12 and get the correct answer? Why or why not? Well, when they used, let's look at that problem, you got two thirds here and one fourth here, right? So they used one fourth, two thirds, and they used 12, right? And they got eight twelfths and three twelfths and they subtracted it right eight twelfths minus three twelfths and got five twelfths right that's what they got okay so it wants to know can they can they do another another common denominator well here's where that trick comes in it's not really a trick it's just a uh, a way of doing math here's how it comes in so let's look at three and four and let's look at the multiples so we got three six nine twelve and then we got four eight twelve right and we found that that was the common denominator well if we go on, we get 16, 20, 24, and we have 15, 18, 21, 24. They have another number in common, and that's 24. So if we take 24 instead of 12, so let's take 24 instead of 12. Let's erase this. So we've got one fourth and two thirds. And this time we're doing 24. Well, three times eight is 24. So two times eight is 16. Four times six is 24. So one times six is six. So now we've got 16 24 minus 6 24 and we're going to get 10 24 We're going to get 10 24 All right. And I want you to look at what 5 12 Oh, we didn't have it. Let me put that down. We got the 5 12 and 10 24 have in common. All right, what 5 twelfths and 10 24 have in common? Check it out. They're equivalent fractions, aren't they? 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 12 is 24. We've multiplied it by the same number on top and bottom, so that means they're common. They're common. They're equivalent. Sorry. All right. So 
we can say, let me go ahead and erase this, we can say yes, because you can use 24 as a comma denominator and get an equivalent fraction. Now, it's not going to be the least comma denominator, but it is a denominator that you can use because 24 is a common multiple of 4 and 3. All right, moving along. All right, in the example on page 390, if Linda had started with one yard of fabric and used five-eighths of a yard, how much fabric would be left? So she started with five-eighths. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Started with one yard. Oh, goodness. So we're doing one minus five-eighths. How can we do that? One minus five eighths. Well, think about this. Remember how we said that when you have a fraction that has the numerator equal to the denominator, then it's one? Well, I want you to think about this then. Let's make one. Mr. Pangburn, why did you use 8 eighths? Well, because 5 eighths, 5 eighths is the denominator. So let's make a common denominator with the fraction that equals 1. So we have 1 here, 8 eighths. We've got 5 eighths. And now that we have the common denominators of 8, we can do 8 minus 5. All right, everyone see how I got that? See, one equals eight over eight. That's how I got that. And the reason why I used eight, because there's an eight here. You know, I could use seven over seven, but why do that when I can use one that has eight as a common denominator? All right. All right. For 3 through 6, find each difference. Well, on number 3, it already gives us our common denominator here. And so we can just do 12 minus 7. And 12 minus 7 is 5 over 21. And then... Eight is the common denominator, right? It's 4 times 2 is 8, so 4 times 2 is 8, so 1 times 2 is 2. Everyone see that? 4 times 2, 1 times 2. All right, and then 5 eighths isn't going to change. 5 minus 2 is 3. See how I'm doing that? I'm making common denominators. And then when I get the common denominators of 8 and 8, I minus or subtract 2 from fives. Five minus two, three eighths. Remember when we're subtracting or adding, we leave that bottom number by itself because it wants to know how many eighths. All right, let's do five and six together and then I want you to do some on your own. All right, so need to find the common denominator. Now look, if if you still need to do this, that's fine. You know, if you need to do 8, 16, 24, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. If you need to keep doing that, then then do that. Okay? Don't don't not do it simply because you don't want to do the work. But you know, if you know it, if you know it, that the common denominator is going to be 24, because you know 8 can go into 24 and 3 can go into 24, and that that's the smallest number, okay? That's great. But make sure, make sure you know it. Make sure you can do that work, okay? You need to know that 
you know, even even if it's not the least common denominator, you need to be able to know that 8 can go into 24 and 3 can go into 24. It needs to be a correct denominator. Alrighty, so 8 times 3 is 24. So 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 8 is 24. So 1 times 8 is 8. And again, if you need to write those down like this, that's fine as well. So you know what number you're multiplying. Alright, so we do 21 minus 8. And 21 minus 8 is 13 24 fourths. Alright, let me erase this so I have room to solve my problem over here. So it's already got our common denominator of 30. See, common denominator of 30. So now we just need to do 24 minus 5. And 24 minus 5 is 19. And we keep the bottom number. You always keep the bottom number. So first, find the common denominator. Okay, rename the fractions. And then subtract the top numbers. Okay, so I want you... Uh, to solve 7 and 8, and then we'll come back and go over them. Alright, so 4 times 2 is 8, so 1 times 2 is 2, and that's going to stay the same. 2 minus 1 is 1, keep the bottom number. 3 times 2 is 6, so 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, so 1 times 3 is 3, and now we've got 1 sixth. 1 sixth. Oh, my picture doesn't have the other, doesn't have the other uh, box there, so I had to do that. All right. I want to do two more with you, and then uh, I want to do you to do two more by yourself, uh, and then we'll go over them. All right, so I'm finding the common denominator, right? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. See how I reason to that? 3 times 3 is 9. Got those denominators there. 9 times 1 is 9, so 5 times 1 is 5. 3 times 3 is 9, so 2 times 3 is 6. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So 2 thirds minus 5 ninths is 1 ninth. Alright, 5, 10, 15, 20 can go into, or can, is a multiple of both of them. 4 times 5 is 20, so 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20, so 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 minus 5 is 11 twentieths. See, you're finding the common denominators. You're renaming these fractions. 4 fifths and 16 twentieths are equivalent fractions. You're renaming them. 1 fourth and 5 twentieths are equivalent fractions after you rename them. 16 minus 5, 11. So you're seeing it's not really hard work. In other words, the hard work, you know, is not where you do 4 times 5 or 5 times 4 or 4 times 4 or 1 times 5. So it's, it's easy, it's just not simple, because there are pr a process, or there is a process that you have to go through when solving these, all right? Let's go ahead and stop here for the day. We will start on 11 and 12 tomorrow, all right? So stop here, and then we'll start on 11 and 12 tomorrow. This is day two of subtract fractions with unlike denominators. It is still found on pages 391 and 392 in your workbook. What did the nut say when it was chasing the other nut? Yeah, one nut was chasing another nut. What, what did he say? I'm a cash you. I'm a catch you. I'm a cash you, cash you. 
It's a nut. It's a nut. It's a nut. We're just going to move along. We're just going to move along. Go ahead and solve 11 and 12 on your own. Remember, you're finding the common denominator. Renaming the fractions and then subtracting. So go ahead and pause. Solve 11 and 12. And then we will go over them. All right. So I know that 2 and 12 have the common multiple of 12 because 2 times 6 is 12. So 2 times 6 is 12. So 3 times 6 is 18. I always get confused when it does this, when it has a an improper fraction. So I'm like, oh, wait a second. The top number is bigger than the bottom one. Well, yes, it is. I get thrown off by that. I don't know if you do, but I do. Okay, so 18 minus 7 you got 11 twelfths. 11 twelfths. All right. 2 and 7 have the common denominator of 14. So 2 times 7 is 14. 1 times 7 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 6 times 2 is 12. And 12 minus 7 is 5. So 5 fourteenths. All right, 13 and 14. Go ahead and solve those two, and then we'll go over it. All right, so I know that 10 is going to be my common denominator. Well, 7 tenths is going to stay the same. 5 times 2 is 10, so 2 times 2 is 4. And 7 minus 4 is 3 tenths. All right, so I know that 16 is going to be my common denominator here because 4 times 4 is 16. Again, since it's got the 16 in it already, I don't need to change it. I will need to change the 1 fourth. 4 times 4 is 16, so 1 times 4 is 4. So 13 minus 4 is 9, so 9 sixteenths. All right, so let's make sure we're finding our common denominators. Common denominators, changing our fractions to um, equivalent fractions, and then subtracting the top numbers, leaving the bottom number alone. All right, so. 15 and 16. Go ahead and solve those and then we'll go over them. All right, so 6 and 9. Well, if I do 9 and 18, well, I know that 6 times 3 is 18. So 18 is going to be our common denominator. That means I'm going to have to change both of these. Because my common denominator is going to be 18. So 9 times 2 is 18, so 2 times 2 is 4. 6 times 3 is 18, so 1 times 3 is 3. And 4 minus 3 is 1, 18. All right, my common denominator of 5 and 8 is going to be 40, right? Because it's, it's 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. And 40 and 5 have a common multiple there or 5 times 8 is 40 so it's a common multiple of 5 and 8 sorry all right so that also means I'm gonna have to change both of these both of them are going to be 40 underneath because that's my common denominator 5 times 8 is 40 so 6 times 8 is 48 it's another one of those improper fractions that threw me off a little bit 8 times 5 is 40, so 3 times 5 is 15. So we're going to have 33 fortieths. All right, going on to some word problems. It says, model with math. Write and solve an equation to find the difference between the location of point A and point B on the ruler. Well, point B... 
we haven't really discussed uh, measuring with a ruler, so I'm just going to show you what the uh, what the measurement's going to be. But you can see that that's one, two, three, four, right? So those are in fourths, so that's one fourth. And then those little bitty marks are sixteenths. So four, eight, twelve, thirteen, sixteenths. So we want to know the difference between them, right? So 13 sixteenths minus 1 fourth. And I'm going to say the common denominator is 16 because 4 times 4 is 16. So 1 times 4 is 4. And then we got that. It's the same. So 13 minus 4 is 9. So 9 sixteenths. So we're going to say 9 sixteenths inch nine sixteenths inch all right moving along number 19 why do fractions need to have a common denominator before you add or subtract them all right and i've made some pictures here to show you now we've got one half and one third, right? Let's say we're adding them. Let's say we're adding one half plus one third. All right. Well, I mean, we can't do one plus one is two, and two plus three is five. That that would be just plain goofy. We do. That's not. That's not how we do it. Let me show you though. So we find that two and three have a common denominator of six, right? Let me show you how, why, why we need to have common denominators to do that, right? So this is the half that we had, and it's got three sixths in it, one, two, three sixths. So remember, one half equals three sixths, okay? Because we did two times three, one times three. Okay, so then if we do one third, we're going to have two sixths. So we've got one half equaling three sixths. We've got two thirds, or I'm sorry, one third equaling two sixths. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, three plus 2 is 5 and we keep the sixths you see why we would keep the six because we're adding up sixths now and we have five of them that's why we need to have common denominators because you look at this that's not two-fifths that is not two-fifths. That is five-sixths. So, we would say this. In order to get the correct sum or difference, they need to have equal parts or denominators. So, in those pictures we saw at the end, it needs to be equal parts. All right, and those equal parts... We call it in math, the denominator. All right, so we're going to go down to number 22 and 23. Number 22 I'm going to do with you, and then number 23 I want you to do on your own, and we'll go over it. So it says, choose the correct numbers from the box below to complete the subtraction sentence that follows. So two of these numbers are going to go in here and make this correct. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is have all of them have a um, common denominator of 30. Now you think, wait, 7 doesn't go into 30. That's right, because I'm not going to mess with that. I just think that that's because that, that is so different than the other ones. I'm not going to mess with that one. And I'm just going to see if the other ones will work. And if the other ones won't work, well, then I'll have to I'll have to look at that one. But for now, because it's so different than the other numbers, I'm going to try 30 and see if it works. So, all right. So 
30. 10 times 3 is 30, so 9 times 3 is 27. All right, and then we got 3 times 10 is 30, so 2 times 15, or 2 times 10 is 20. So we get this one and this one, and we've got the other 30ths already. Oh, and then we need to make 1 30th, 1 third uh, 30th, so we got 30. All right, and then 10 times 3 is 30, so 1 times 10 is 10, so 10 thirtieths. So something minus 10 thirtieths is something else. So let's see this. Which one can we get? Well, look here. Look here. We're just looking at the top numbers. We just need to look at the top numbers because all the bottom numbers are third. Look at 27 and 17. 27 minus 17 is 10, right? Right, so if we did 27 minus 10, it would be 17. See, I said 27, 27 minus 17 is 10. There's my 10 right there, but 27 minus 10 is also 17. Fact, family. All right. So basically, you're going to be doing the same thing on 23. Make all of these a common denominator and see which what minus what is going to be 7. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll go over it. All right, so we've got 11 twelfths. 1 6 is going to be 2 twelfths. 1 fourth is going to be 3 twelfths. 1 half is going to be 6 twelfths. And 3 fourths is going to be 9 12. So something minus something is 7. Well, I got, got it right here. Look, 9 minus 2. And what is 9, nine twelfths is 3 fourths. So 3 fourths. And then 2 twelfths was 1 sixth. So 3 fourths minus 1 sixth is 7 twelfths. All right. This was a bit of a long one but we got through it and hopefully now you are well versed in subtracting fractions with unlike denominators have a good day